With the next Pokemon TCG set out, I'm on the hunt and I got myself a booster pack to open. But here's the twist. Nor should I say spin. For each card that I draw that's a Pokemon, I'm going to spin a wheel of forms from Evolution to Mega Evo to Paradox Forms and whatever I land on, I gotta create it. I shall call this series Draw and Draw. Nah, that sucks. Let's just jump straight into the card opening. Welcome back. Here I have a beautiful Temporal Forces Iron Crown card packet. We're going to crack it open. Uh, and for each card that I draw that's a Pokemon, not a, you know, item or trainer or whatever, I'm going to spin a wheel and draw a new form for it. Let's get right into it. I am keen as a bean, as I couldn't find these anywhere, but the nice person at my local EB Games allowed me to have one. Well, buy one, but it was super cool of them to do that. So let's get that code cut out of the way. Oh, I'm so keen. All right, let's begin. First, we've got, oh, Raichu, that is a cute card. Look at the art on that, beautiful. Next, oh my god, a Victini with a flippity flap. This is already off to a great start. Okay, next, Bronzo, uh, you know, it's cool. Like the, the painting style is amazing, but I just don't like Bronzo. All right, next. Ah, oh, Mudbra- Oh, he's got the poop on his nose. Yuck, Mudbra, you're nasty. I'm moving away from you. The Buddy Buddy Poffin. Is that based off that new Pokemon dance song? Because that's kind of cool. Um, alright. Oh, Iron Tread's Future. That is awesome. I love the look of the future card. That is so cool. Heck yeah. And next... A bo boxed order, yeah! I'll make a Pokemon on that. Ah, oh, Drill Bear Reverse Hollow with Diggy Diggy Dig. Very cute. Next. Oh! Oh, Iron Jug Jugulus. Is that a Hollow? Wow, that's awesome. Super cool. I don't know how I'm going to spin doing other things for a already future paradox, but I'm happy to give it a go. And, whoa, oh, I forgot that there's another card here. Oh my god, an Iron Valiant future. Oh, look at the shine on that. That is just amazing. Heck yeah. All right, and a fighting energy. Yippee. All right, let's um jump right into it, shall we? Okay, so let's spin for our first card, Raichu. And we got Convergent Form. Oh, this will be interesting. So, from my land, Australia, then I guess my region of Stara, we draw inspiration from the humble kangaroo. I know that, like, Convergence are usually wildly different species, and going from a rat to a slightly bigger, more Australian rat isn't exactly a massive leap. Heh, <laughs> leap, kangaroo. But for this one, I had a great idea, and I just couldn't shake the name Kangachu from my mind. So this would be a larger Raichu adjacent creature that doesn't have the electric type. This made the biggest challenge being figure out what to do with all the electric motifs. The tail and the cheeks, really. But this came to be quite quick for the cheeks. What if Kangachu had eyes where the cheeks were? Emulating the same yellow, and the eyebrows were where Raichu's normal eyes are, giving this look of almost being a patterned mimic of Raichu. I don't know about you, but I think it's kind of genius. The tail wasn't too hard to figure out, I decided to instead make it a thick, muscular tail instead of the small, cabled-like tail of Raichu. And that worked out quite well. I don't really have much, if not any, convergence in my Australian region of Stara, so maybe this would fit in well. Check out that series if you haven't, as it's a whole journey now. Kangachu, the Roo Pokemon a rock type. Found in hot regions, Kangachu seemed to be a related species to Raichu, even to the point of looking incredibly similar to it, patterns and all. Where this species differs to Raichu, however, is that this Pokemon has no electricity power whatsoever. But what it lacks in elemental ability, it has great maneuverability. Climbing rocky outcrops and rough terrains with great ease in large, bounding strides. Females of the species have a large pouch that is used to hold young, 
The pouch is incredibly soft and well protected to avoid damaging the child during rocky explorations. Kangachu has the abilities Oblivious and Rattled. Okay, Victini spin now. Oh, Future Paradox time. I love this. Let's go. I will say it every time now. I love doing Future Paradoxes so much. Literally, you can hear and watch me change how I feel about them over the course of my Paradox videos. It's so funny. I did pass Victini before in Tiny Terror, so we can finally get the other end of the timeline now. I didn't have like a super solid idea of where to go with this one. I knew I wanted to keep the general form of Victini the same, but play up the cute little butt wings it has, and maybe have them shaped similar to Iron Moth's wings. This time around, I did get some ideas from other paradoxes, mainly in the very awkwardly shaped leg parts. I actually referenced the sort of folded up legs of Maraidon for it, and it actually gave a very cool look to it. And now I can just imagine it zipping around levitating instead of running around, but unfurling little leggies when ready to walk about normally. Because this is Iron Genera, I thought it'd be fun to have its typing be fire electric, as it connects the two box legends of Victini's origins, Reshiram and Zekrom, who are also based off types of energy too. It all comes together. I must say, I think I cooked with the perspective and digital eyes here. Yeah, it seems today I'm just all about tooting my own horn, which is a shocking change of pace for me. Iron Generator, the Paradox Pokemon of Fire and Electric type. This curious creature resembles the Pokemon Victini, introduced in a paranormal magazine as a creature that came from space to provide infinite energy to all. Everywhere around Iron Generator is a field that provides power. Not only do people in Pokemon feel better around it, but technology turns on and full charged even when not connected to a wall socket. It has a boundless curiosity for technology, and many theorize that it is trying to understand our lower level of technology compared to their times. Iron Genera has the ability, Quark Drive. Alright, Bronze on next. And we got new evolution. I feel like this may be tough. Funny story with this one is I forgot the card was drawn, so this one was actually done last. Oopsie. The idea for this one actually came from my Council of Brains, my GF, who learned of the origin of Bronzer and Bronzong, which I'll include the Bulbapedia link in the description, but it makes so much more sense now why Bronzer evolves into Bronzong. Long story short, they are based on a Japanese folk tale of a mirror and a bell, about some priests who melt down bronze mirrors so they can make a bell for their temple. One mirror is cursed and can't be melted. There's more to the story. But what's more important is people were inspired by this tale and one popular tale was a Japanese man from a little bit later on who couldn't afford some armor. So was going to destroy a bronze basin. So this is where my idea for this is. The idea was kind of a bronze on shape like a basin. The arms become four stands that would work like legs or maybe even arms as well. And the classic Bronzong face is still sort of there, but now a crack runs along the top, referencing the breaking of the basin, and allowed me to show off that cheeky smile. Being a basin, I got rid of the Psychic type and went for Water type here. Although Water Psychic probably would have worked as well. Man, doing all these geometric shapes in perspective really did get me drained. Bronzen, the Bronze Basin Pokemon, a Steel and Water type, evolves from Bronzer after using a Water Stone. While Bronzong was the bringer of rain, Bronzen would hold the water so that none would go to waste and became a source of life for anyone near Bronzen. The water it holds has spectacular properties that can help heal illnesses and some say even reverse aging. Bronzen can control the waters to launch attacks at foes looking to take all of its water. Legends tell of a person who threatened to destroy their Bronzen by smashing it on the ground if people would not pay them money. Bronzen have the abilities weak armor and water absorb. Muddy Mudbray time. And oh, a regional form. Now I've got to figure out what region. I chose Unova, the land of the free. And for the type of donkey breed, through some sleuthing, I found the American Mammoth Jackstock, a real mouthful of a breed name. 
But I thought a big old mud bray who's always grumpy works really well for this. In truth, it's grumpy because of a silly connection I wanted to make to American style game box art, where they would always make the protagonist angry. Kirby has had enough. This Mudbray would be fighting type, losing its sort of want to farm and purely wants to throw down with everything. No muddy legs here, but instead pure muscle backing up its kicks. Much more angular in this form, with hair that sort of spikes out, showing a bit more of an aggressive silhouette. And the mane in front now parts out and hangs over the eyes to show how angry this hee haw is. Now, this truly is a donkey on the edge. Mudbray, the donkey Pokemon, a fighting type, you know, in form. Through some breeding programs, trying to get a Mudbray capable of defending itself against predators while maintaining their farming ability. This ended up creating a breed of Mudbray that was way too stubborn and aggressive. It allows nothing more than to kick at anything near it. Objects will go flying with no regard, so be careful of standing behind Mudbray. Due to it being used less for farming, there isn't much mud accumulating upon their legs, but it more than makes up for that lack of weight with pure muscular legs. Mudbray and the Swarm have the abilities Anger Point and Stamina. So before we continue, please don't forget to like, sub, and share this video around. But more so than that, the future and past paradox of these sets do bring in a unique challenge. Not only for all categories, but their replacement for their respective paradoxes. I created the present paradox. This probably won't work for every paradox, but ones like Iron Treads and Iron Valiant, I thought it would work well. Turning them back into the normal Pokemon, seeing as they don't look like their present inspiration anyway. So let's go back to the spoon! Okay, Iron Tread Spin time. And we. Oh no, a convergent? This was a struggle to figure out. Do I make a robot that was similar to it? Nah, that's boring. So instead I said, let's be a bit silly and turn Iron Treads into a modern day bug. Sort of. This convergent form would be based off the pill bug and would make the Pokemon go closer to the ground. Simplifying it a bit and turning those unnecessary horns into even more unnecessarily large antennae. With how Iron Treads has the big screen with the face read out, our convergent here, Tread Bug, Instead, it has the tread sort of over the hollow void where the glowing eyes peek out from. I feel like making the Donphan line normally into pillbugs would actually work rather well. And this design just kind of comes out quite naturally. The worst part was just trying to keep everything on the tread shell in perspective. Ugh, it was actually hell. Bugfire for this one, I like in the Iron Tread Dex entry mentioning it sort of carves out and burns the ground as it rolls, so its convergent form is a bit of that sizzlepede thing going on here. Treadbug, the Pillbug Pokemon, a bug and fire type. Many say that this curious Pokemon is the inspiration for the tale of the Iron Treads. Treadbug sports a heavy shell that causes it to move slowly along the grasslands, usually in herds. During the late nights, they huddle together for warmth and protection. The panels on their shell light up from the heat they produce within their bodies. This can produce varying degrees of heat. At high heat, this can cause damage to Treadbug as well. Treadbug can retreat within their shell, but can't roll around unless pushed. A tactic employed by smart predator Pokemon on Treadbug. Treadbug have the abilities Anger Shell and Frisk. Okay, let's spin for Drillbur. Okay, Beast Paradox. That's gonna be fun. Beast Paradox is my own gimmick of Ultra Space Transform Pokemon. They're a lot bigger and meaner and sometimes change completely. In the case of Drillbur here though, I thought it'd be fun if it instead of being able to evolve into Excadrill in Ultra Space, instead became this massive dangerous tunneler. A sort of Badger Mole from Avatar situation, where they lost all their sight but could see through the tremors in the earth. This Drillbur is bursting out of the ground and is inspired by Starnose Moles and a hint of Dromojimon, one of my favourite Digimon. It connects a bit to Excadrill, but is even larger and intimidating. For this one, I chose Rock Dragon. I thought it was fitting, although Ground would have also worked, but I didn't want it to keep the original typing here. Drillbur, Beast Paradox form, the Tunneler Pokemon, a Rock and Dragon type. In Ultra Space, Drillbur had no chance to evolve, so instead they adapted by burrowing underground. A combo of Ultra Radiation and a diet of Strange Soil caused him to become large, blind, and aggressive. 
Much of the tunnels beneath areas of the Ultra Convergence are ruled by many Drillbur. Anything trespassing beneath will be chased endlessly. Hiding underground is hard due to their honed senses. Being blind has led to some Drillbur tunneling off the floating isles and falling to a new island below. Drillbur has a new ability called Earth Sense, where it raises the accuracy of moves and partially gets through Protect against non-flying type Pokemon and Pokemon without Levitate. Okay, so next is Iron Jugulus. Oh yeah, Mega, let's do a Mega Paradox. Hydreigon for me always is cool with a Mega where it gets more heads, so Iron Jugulus is no different. I wanted it to be this thing where Jughead here now just floats along aimlessly while the other head units, which were disconnected before but now have changed to become these speedy little independent missile things. The middle part now almost looks like just the spine of the creature and when I add in the parts to the tail you'll see why. Because this is a Mega, I thought it only fair to give it a different ability from Quark Drive. Instead of being a quarked up Pokemon with a little bit of swagger, it now has the Ghost and Dragon typing and gets a Berserk ability because that's just fitting for a Pokemon like it. For colouring, I had to try and tackle the unique head LEDs that Iron Jugulus has. Unlike the other Future Paradoxes, whose eyes are usually just a dot texture, the entire head of Juggy is a sort of digital readout, along with the other heads too, except for the jaws. I ended up filling it with a dark grey and using the dot texture brush I had just painting in all of the eyes and other parts there. It turned out quite well, but it is a bit difficult to see unless you really zoom in. Mega Eye Jugulus, the Paradox Pokemon, a Ghost and Dragon type. Utilizing the Mega Stone of Hydreigon allows Iron Jugulus to Mega Evolve. This process overloads and changes Iron Jugulus. The multiple heads attached to it increased and now act like sentient missiles. They can blast around and either bite the foe or explode violently. The head will slowly reconstruct after time. The main unit of Iron Jugulus can't do much except float around, but it's capable of firing blasts of energy. However, expending too much energy can explode the unit, ending the battle quickly. In its mega form, Iron Jugulus has the ability Berserk. And the final of the video is Iron Valiant. And we got present paradox, that means it's time to flashify it. So this one is pretty straightforward because this is essentially just an in-between of Gallade and Gardevoir. It gets the mohawk horde of Gallade, the hair curls of Gardevoir, and these weird almost pigtail-like parts from neither of them. I think this is what helps make this present version, which I've dubbed Gallian its own thing, is those extra parts like the arm armor and the sort of half-dress armor. For the weapon, because with Iron Valley it is literally just that a weapon that it holds, I thought it would work well to have the sides of the arms sort of shoot out into the blades when needed and retract back in to make the horns. Maybe it could even use it as sort of a bow stand in, who knows? I actually keep the typing the same as Iron Valiant here. It's smart that it's an in-between typing of the two Pokemon. The Evo method for this is essentially you take a Curlier on a pilgrimage of both Gallad and Gardevoir in your party, so it gets a nice experience from both of the GA family fighting styles. This one was interesting, I think if I went back to this design I may make the pink part stand out just a bit less. Galliant, the twin style Pokemon, a fighting and fairy type. Evolves from Curlier after walking a large amount of steps with both a Gardevoir and Gallade in the party. This strange evolution to Curlier seems to have mastered both the powerful elemental energy of Gardevoir and the blade work of Gallade to create a deadly force of a Pokemon. The horns on the sides of their arms can extend out to create sharp blades, while extended, their hands are also capable of firing out psychic blasts like an archer with a bow. It strives the constant perfection of its craft, and will get depressed if it falters. Galliant has the abilities Inner Focus and Sharpness. And that's all of the designs I did. A bit sad we didn't get a super crazy rare card or anything, but that's the fun of it all, and who knows, maybe I'll do another soon. Comment below if you'd like to see me open a few more Temporal Forces packs at some point before the next set rolls in as they come in real quick. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.
side all along. 